one of the seven wonders of the world. The Great Barrier Reef is the largest living structure on the planet. It's home to a quarter of our marine life and serves as a carbon sink, removing CO2 from the atmosphere. At its core is coral. The animal has suffered rising sea temperatures, leading to recent mass bleaching events, turning them ghostly white and sometimes dying. At the latest COP29 event in Azerbaijan, it was announced that 44% of the Earth's corals are under threat of extinction. But innovations are unfolding, and at Sydney's Taronga Zoo, efforts are underway to help. One idea being developed here is to preserve coral for many, many years to come, and it's very cool. This is the world's largest cryopreservation bank of living corals. They're freezing them for the future. They have had a pause button pressed on their biological clock. So these cells are frozen in liquid nitrogen and the temperature of the liquid nitrogen is minus 196 degrees Celsius. It's very, very cold. So you can see exactly wow. what we're looking at. We won't pull it out because uh -huh. we don't want to warm the samples up yeah, and, course, and damage yeah. them, but they're sitting nice and safe inside that tank there. Uh, they can go up a little bit warmer and not, not be damaged, uh -huh. but anything above minus 150, we don't want. Right, OK, well, let's get the lid back on then and let's keep them do safe. It. They're frozen in time, but these are living cells that we can thaw out decades, centuries into the future to ensure that genetic diversity is not lost. And that genetic diversity can be introduced into populations. Roughly half the samples survive, but using computer-assisted analysis, researchers are able to determine which sperm to put on ice. This particular sample has uh, a large number of sperm moving. We can use it to monitor sperm quality over time, and there's a bit of um, artificial intelligence in there, that machine learning approach uh, for predicting, for example, which colonies we should be biobanking from. They've got around 4,000 vials equates to more than four trillion sperm, a lot of sperm in those vials. Getting them here requires careful transportation. So this is a mini tank. It looks mini like a giant thermos flask. Yeah, it is. It really is. And this one's empty, so you can actually see a canister, and this will hold the samples in place when they're being shipped. Oh, wow. You can see that barcode there, which identifies everything from the species of coral, the number of sperm in that viable, the sea country of the corals, uh, so where, where those samples came from. And so that vial, there'll be about five vials sitting on this cane. Yeah. And that cane, after the samples are frozen, will be put inside that canister. Yeah. And then that canister yeah, goes, goes inside there. back inside the tank. Set for travel. Let's put it back. How much of an impact will this work have on restoring the reef? We're seeing uh, corals not being able to withstand these higher temperatures. And so we're losing genetic diversity uh, each summer. You can screen certain colonies for those heat tolerance traits, and then we can prioritise our biobanking activities for those particular reefs. Spawning, which is the mass event when coral release their eggs to be fertilised, only happens once per year but the team are designing a workaround. We can only cryopreserve sperm and use that sperm during spawning. If we can cryopreserve larvae, because they represent the male and the female genome, we could potentially put them out on the reef at any time of the year. Coral IVF is only part of the preservation puzzle. Over at Queensland University of Technology, robots are being developed to help raise coral babies. We want to image the corals in order to automatically assess and measure their health so that we know that the corals are growing well, how many there are, and when they'll be ready to go back onto the Great Barrier Reef. Traditionally, all of the counting is done manually, which involves a trained expert hunched over a microscope counting very tiny microscopic corals one by one over a small area that is only about 30 by 30 centimeters. While it takes an expert about an hour to count one tile, it takes us a couple of seconds. Couple of seconds? The system is 88% accurate, which Dorian says is as fast as a human. Even so, they've got their work cut out for them. We need to grow over 
10 million corals per year. And so to do that, we need to have tens of thousands of these coral tiles being measured and counted every single week for up to 12 weeks. You end up costing, just in pure counting time, over $6 million per year. As well as cash, it could save lab time by generating heat maps. You can just look for the brighter spots and know that the corals are doing well. Do you really think that this project will help save the reef? There's certain high density megacities across the Great Barrier Reef that if you target those, you can have maximal effectiveness. We are targeting the damaged reefs and trying to tip them over to surviving for many more decades to come.